Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we are in Pinedale, Wyoming. Now, when many RV travelers think of Wyoming, they only think of Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. But there's a whole lot more to see and do in the state of Wyoming, and we'll share some of that with you on this episode. So, stay tuned. We'll start out this episode by sharing our search for a place to camp before exploring Pinedale, its surroundings, and its unique importance to the discovery and exploration of the American West. There's a plethora of great boondocking opportunities and dry National Forest Service campgrounds among the lakes and hills at the foot of the Wind River Mountains, just east and north of Pinedale. We'll share a number of them for you here as we scout out a place to camp for the week. We'll start with Boulder Lake. The dam area is on BLM land, but the land management quickly shifts to Bridger Teton National Forest as you head eastward up the lake. Here at the head of Boulder Lake sits a small National Forest Drive campground. Fremont Lake is, in our opinion, the prettiest of the lakes overlooking Pinedale. It's named for explorer, military officer, U.S. Senator, and presidential candidate John Fremont, for whom the city of Fremont, California is also named. Fremont, however, never got closer to this lake than the top of Fremont Peak, in the nearby Wind River Mountains that also bears his name. This lake was earlier known by two other names, Lake Drummond and Stewart's Lake after Wyoming's first tourist, Sir William Drummond Stewart of Scotland, who attended the early fur trappers rendezvous in this area in the 1830s. Artist Alfred Jacob Miller accompanied Stewart to this spot in 1837 and painted the first pictures of the area. This was known to be one of Sir Stewart's favorite places. While boondocking near Fremont Lake is limited by Forest Service regulation, the Fremont Lake campground sits right on the lake's south shore with 44 reservable dry single sites, four double sites, and one group site. The campground is accessible via paved road all the way. Sites near the campground's entrance appear to be newer and feature large pull-through paved pads to accommodate any size rig. Sites further back from the campground's entrance offer more seclusion. Many of these are pulled through as well, but pads back here are gravel. Picnic tables and fire rings with grills are provided with all sites at Fremont Lake, as are vault toilets and drinking water. A boat ramp and dock are on site. Single sites cost $12 per night. Just a mile or two from Fremont Lake, Half Moon Lake sits in a hollow at the foot of the Wind River Mountains. There are 17 rather small dry campsites here, three of which have direct access to the water for $7 per night. We're working our way from southeast to northwest. At Soda Lake, all camping is free boondocking in a Wyoming State Wildlife Habitat Management Area with beautiful views of the Wind River Mountains towering above the lake.
By the time you get to Willow Lake, you're back within the Bridger Teton National Forest. There's a small, free, dry campground right on the beach at the lake's western end. But our favorite camping in the Pinedale area is over an hour away, up 19 miles of rough dirt road along the Green River at Green River Lakes. We know we can't camp here because there's no cell service for work. But in honor of our boondocking site from episode 108, a friend and viewer left this sign at our favorite spot. If you'd like to know more about camping here, we'll put a link to episode 108 right here on the screen. The problem with all of these sites, however, is that cell phone signal that we need for work is either hopelessly weak or outright non-existent. So that's how we ended up here in Highline Trail RV Park in Boulder, Wyoming, about 12 miles south of Pinedale. They've got the cell service that we needed to work for the week, and they also have full hookup pull-through sites. And you can see behind me, there is a ton of space between the sites. There's a lot of elbow room here to enjoy. I don't remember the exact rate. We're paying 30 something per night, but this has been perfect for our week here in Pinedale. There's some beautiful scenery surrounding Boulder, 
12 miles southeast of Pinedale. This is the Boulder Store, which along with its integrated bar, grill, and package store and the motel next door, constitutes the entire retail establishment of Tiny Boulder. Population, 40 people. Pinedale is the commercial, tourism, and services hub for this entire western side of the Wind River Mountains. Home to nearly 2,000 people, Pinedale serves as the gateway to the Wind Rivers for hunters, fishermen, hikers, backpackers, canoeists, kayakers, and fly fishermen. The single supermarket in Pinedale, Ridley's, is shockingly complete, including an integrated Ace Hardware and liquor store. If you need a stick of butter, some Carhartts, a new wrench, or a bottle of booze, RV travelers will find it all at Ridley's. Tourists walking the streets of Pinedale include both the two-legged and the four-legged kind. The excellent Museum of the Mountain Man sits on a short bluff on the outskirts of Pinedale. The museum is dedicated to frontier life in central Wyoming and tells the tale of the fur trade that developed in this area in the 1830s, thanks to one of the richest areas of prolific beaver to ever be found anywhere in the U.S. and the mountain men who made that industry possible. Mountain men and natives would gather each summer for a rendezvous, a massive two-week get-together where they would sell and trade beaver pelts for supplies needed for the next 12 months. Several rendezvous were held along the Green River near Pinedale throughout the 1830s. One of the museum's more fascinating exhibits displays a collection of letters sent from the frontier back home to locations further east. While these letters on display are reproductions, the originals are held in the museum's vaults. One notable figure in the region's history is Benjamin Bonneville. An army officer, fur trapper, and explorer of the American West, made famous by author Washington Irving's biographical account of Bonneville's western explorations. Bonneville left Missouri in 1832 with 110 men on an expedition to find a route to Oregon, financed by millionaire John Jacob Astor of the American Fur Company. He constructed Fort Bonneville along the Green River near Pinedale, nicknamed Fort Nonsense by the mountain men for its dubious location that was never used to trade fur.
The Oregon Trail crossed through this valley west of the Wind Rivers, thanks to explorer Jedediah Smith pioneering South Pass across the range's southern end as the dominant route for travelers to negotiate the Continental Divide. Mountain man Jim Beckworth was a mixed race man born into slavery in Virginia. As a fur trapper, he lived with the Crow Nation for many years and is credited with discovering Beckworth Pass across the Sierra Nevada between present day Reno, Nevada and Portola, California during the gold rush years. But perhaps the most famous American mountain man, trapper, army scout, and wilderness guide was Jim Bridger. And on display at the Museum of the Mountain Man is Bridger's own 40 caliber rifle. Fascinated by the exhibits at the Museum of the Mountain Man, with the help of museum staffers, we're going to head out across the countryside to find some of the sites explained at the museum. Here at Trapper's Point, we found a viewpoint that takes in much of the surrounding area, including the sites of Fort Bonneville and the Green River Rendezvous. There's also here a plaque to explain the discovery of a nearly 8,000 year old pronghorn antelope kill site unearthed during the construction of nearby US Route 191. We've found the site of Fort Bonneville where the stockade along the Green River was completed in August 1832. Heavy autumn snows caused Bonneville to reconsider the site 
and the party abandoned it, leading the place to become known as Bonneville's Folly or Fort Nonsense. Bonneville's expedition instead moved on to the Salmon River in Idaho to spend that winter. We've also found the site of the Green River Rendezvous, where the American Fur Company would each summer send a mule train carrying whiskey and supplies and set up a trading fair, the Rendezvous, and pack furs out to St. Louis, Missouri at its conclusion. Rendezvous were known to be lively, joyous places where all were allowed. Fur trappers, Indians, native trapper wives and children, harlots, travelers, and later tourists who would venture from as far as Europe to observe the festivities. The Green River Rendezvous was held at the site of the present-day hamlet of Daniel, which is itself a photogenic target for our cameras. Father DeSmet's Prairie Mass site, located about one mile east of Daniel, is the site of the first Catholic Mass ever to be held in Wyoming on July 5, 1840, by Jesuit missionary Pierre-Jean DeSmet, a congregation of 2,000 people composed of Native Americans, trappers, and traders from the region attended the service. A stone altar was constructed for the Mass, and this granite cross, enclosed by a small chapel, was later added to the altar site. The service was one of the earliest Christian religious ceremonies conducted in the Rocky Mountains, and a commemorative Mass is celebrated on the second Sunday after the 4th of July every year. So that's going to do it for this episode of Grand Adventure from Pinedale, Wyoming, and it's also going to do it for our American Heartland Tour 2020. Now that's not to say that our season's over. We're gonna be bringing you great content every single week here on YouTube, just like we always do. We have many more grand adventures planned for you, but this does end our American Heartland Tour 2020 across much of the midsection of the United States. Now this year has been a learning experience for us in many, many ways. And we're going to take the opportunity in an episode coming up to share with you some of the lessons that we've learned during this summer's American Heartland Tour 2020. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, this is the perfect time to go smash that little red subscribe button, the one right down there in the corner of your screen, and ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every Grand Adventure that airs every Wednesday evening. We would be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. Now, down below, you'll find the comment section where we always love to hear from you. And while you're down there, it's extremely important to us that if you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.